Welcome back to channel 37. You may have seen from our last video, we completed our DIY Oberhausen. And for those of you who are watching this, we can assume that you've either made everything from scratch or you've gotten a partial SMD kit. Either way, there's not so much information out there about the calibration and it's very extensive. So we're gonna talk you through the whole process and make sure that your Oberhausen is calibrated to perfection. So please watch. Of course, the very first thing we're going to do is calibrate the brightness of this LED. That's better. Because the Oberhausen has so many sources of modulation, we find it really useful to adjust some settings before starting the calibration procedure. And the first thing is to disengage the modulation oscillator from both sides. And for that purpose, you take these two center switches and put them both in the middle position. Secondly, it can be useful to turn the tone knob to about the 12 o'clock position. Tone is kind of an equalizer circuit and we want it to be as neutral as possible. The next step is to set both pulse width modulation knobs to the middle and to turn the frequency of the modulation oscillator all the way down. We're going to turn the blend CV knob all the way left, overload, which is clipping, all the way left, frequency modulation all the way left, timbre, which is wave folding all the way left, and FM rate all the way left. Right now we're going to calibrate the Oberhausen. We've got a voltage offset from the disting plugged into the volt per octave input. And then we're taking the audio out of the tri-saw output and patching that first to the oscilloscope and then out to the computer. So first we're going to tune this oscillator to an easy frequency, like for example 50 Hz. And we're going to use the coarse tune and the fine tune. It doesn't have to be exact, but it should be pretty close. And now uh, we're going to increase the voltage offset. So we've gone up by four octaves, so we should double the frequency four times. That should be 800 hertz. But you see we're coming in sharp at 961 hertz. So this is where we need to adjust the trim pulled. So this one is at 50. And this one is at 804. So now you have to repeat the same procedure for the other oscillator. The trim pot is right here. So remember the procedure. First, you're gonna set the control voltage pretty low and you're going to tune the oscillator to a frequency such as 50 Hertz. And then you're going to increase the control voltage, for example, by four octaves. And if you increase by four octaves, then you have to double the frequency in Hertz four times. So if you start at 50 Hertz, that's going to be 800 Hertz. Then you use this trim pot to dial in that high frequency pitch as close to the 800 as possible. Then you go back down four octaves and you adjust the fine tuning until you're back at 50. And you go back and forth between the high and the low frequency until they are exactly four multiples away from each other. Then your oscillator is scaled for voltage per octave control. Now we're going to calibrate the overload distortion. This will be easy to calibrate using the sine wave. This distortion only works on the right oscillator. So I'll plug this into the oscillator 2 output. Then I'll increase the overload distortion. And you see it clipping the waveform. I kind of like this, but in case you want to adjust it, that's this trim pod. Can go from a really squashed signal to something that's barely affected. I like to be somewhere in the middle. I like the signal to be a little mangled, but still audible, not completely squashed. The next thing to calibrate is the pulse width. We'll start with the left pulse. What you want is that the pulse width knob is as symmetrical as possible. And you may notice that if I turn it all the way to the left, 
the sound becomes inaudible and this is because the pulse width is non-existent at that point and if I start turning it right you will first hear an impulse wave and then it will become more of a pulse wave that's the impulse that's pulse width and if I go further to the right we'll get a positive impulse wave and it becomes inaudible again so if I start dialing this back it's about one hour if you consider this as a clock phase I have to go about one hour back for it to become audible and it's the same on the other end I have about one hour if you imagine this as a clock phase before it becomes audible this is calibrated over here and you can hear it become audible And you can do the same on both sides. The next thing to calibrate is the balance between both oscillators. What you want is that if this knob is in the center, the main output gives you a balanced ratio of the left and the rightmost oscillator. And there are two things that you can calibrate in order to make this happen. The first is the gain of the left and the right oscillator. On my build, these trim pots are a little difficult to reach because they are not perfectly fitted into the slots in the front panel but thankfully the output of both oscillators is about equally loud the second thing you need to calibrate are these two trim pots on the top the way to calibrate this in my opinion is to turn this knob to the middle and then turn an oscillator up over here on the left side adjust this trim pot until it's a certain volume and you check the volume on your oscilloscope then turn it down Listen to the same oscillator on the other side and turn the trim pot until the volume is about equal. The next thing to adjust is the sine symmetry. So we turn up the sine wave. Here it is. Now that looks really symmetrical to me. Sounds symmetrical too. But nonetheless, if we want to adjust it, it's right here. And you see it becoming more asymmetrical. And more symmetrical. The next thing to adjust is the wave distortion. That's this one. So this should be adjusted fully clockwise and then dialed back until there is no more distortion. So here we see no more distortion, perfectly calibrated. Now the sign offset. I have to say I'm already pretty happy with this sign, but I can adjust the offset here. Well, that's certainly not a nice sign. Look at that flattened wave. If I go down like this, it's too much again. I get a flattened bottom. And like this, it's really perfect. Now the sign to timbre circuitry. I think for this purpose, we have to open up the timbre and decrease the sign. So here's our timbre and we should be able to adjust the sign to timbre here. So the key here is to turn this completely clockwise and then turn it back until no distortion occurs. I don't see any distortion, I just see nice wave folding. Maybe if I turn the timbre all the way down first. Now it's a little distorted, but not very much. Maybe I want some distortion on that. This is very intense.
But I have to say, I kind of like it like this. Now I can adjust the timbre offset, which is this trimmer. So with timbre closed, I'm just going to dial that back to a sine wave. I'm pretty happy with that. That's the Oberhausen calibrated.